I'm Mike Dorsey, the filmmaker behind the documentary Murder Rap, Inside the Biggie and Tupac Murders, and a co-producer on the scripted series that kind of came out of it called Unsolved, The Murders of Tupac and the Notorious B.I.G. for Netflix and the USA Network, starring Josh Demel and Bokeem Woodbine. I was also a consultant on several other television docu-series on this subject, including a es Who Killed Tupac and Biggie, The Life of Notorious B.I.G. and B.E.T.'s Death Row Chronicles. This video is the first in a series where I will dive deep into aspects of the Biggie and Tupac murder cases that I think have been overlooked or at least underexplored. The first case that I want to look at is the case of the mysterious striped shirt guy from the night of Biggie's murder. On the night of Biggie's murder, he was attending a party at LA's Peterson Automotive Museum, billed as an after party for the previous night's Soul Train Music Awards, which had been held at the Shrine Auditorium in LA the night before. A long story short, the party was shut down by the fire department around midnight, and Biggie and Puffy and their entourage made their way down to the first floor of the parking garage, where they took photos and talked to fans and waited for their vehicles to be brought around. They were going to go to another party at a house uh, from there. During this time, their security detail was on alert for any possible troublemakers and the huge crowd of people that were leaving the party and milling around in the parking garage. Uh, it's only been about six months at this point since the murder of Biggie's friend turned rival Tupac Shakur. The rivalry between Biggie and Puffy and Death Row Records is still very much alive, uh, and they're just blocks away, literally, down the street from Death Row Records' offices. So they're almost literally in Death Row's backyard partying months after Tupac's murder. So security is on alert. There were known gang members at the party, including Bloods, who were allegedly aligned with Death Row. So, you know, Biggie has enemies there, and the risk is high. Uh, maybe higher than, than they probably realized, unfortunately. They spotted a man in a suit and bow tie described as looking like a member of the Nation of Islam, uh, and those, those members were known to sometimes provide security. This is the figure that followers of this case have always focused on because the composite sketches of the shooter that were made after the fact showed a guy in a bow tie. And Puffy's bodyguard that night, Eugene Deal, had seen a similarly dressed individual in the parking garage approaching their group. Uh, in a suspicious way, Eugene Deal thought the guy was armed or might be armed, and then the guy turned around and left when Eugene Deal confronted him. The reliability of these police sketches of the suspect is something that I'll get into in another video, but for our purposes today, the point is that this figure in the bow tie has gotten all of the attention from fans over the years trying to solve this case, but he wasn't the only suspicious individual spotted in the garage that night. Enter Striped Shirt Guy. Biggie's friend, Damian Butler, who was there that night, said that he, quote, noticed one guy walk from the street and stare at them with a mad face. He described the person as being a male black in his 20s wearing a blue and white pullover shirt, dark complexion. So that's Damian Butler. Then Puffy's driver that night, a guy named Kenny Story, also spotted the same individual stating that, quote, after the vibe party while standing in the parking structure, I noticed a lone male standing several feet away staring at us. I made eye contact with Damian indicating that we should keep an eye on him. This guy also walked right through our group and we just watched him. I think he could have been involved in Biggie's death because of the way he was mad dogging us. Uh, mad dogging be, you know, looking at someone with an angry face, uh, kind of staring them down. Uh, continuing with his quote, he appeared to be a gang member and no one from our group knew him. He was a male, black, 5'8 to 5'10, 185 to 205 pounds, mid to late 20s, dark complexion, short hair, no beard unknown if he wore a mustache and he had blue jeans and a long sleeve blue and white striped shirt the shirt was a pullover type with a collar and he wore it loose and almost down to his knees detectives showed Kenny Story the driver who gave that statement uh, the famous home video footage that was filmed by fans from across the street just as Biggie and Puffy's entourage were leaving the party and he identified a guy in a striped shirt standing near a Bentley in the video as quote the same person who kept staring at his group. 
Now, I've looked at this video hundreds of times. This appears to be the person that he was probably talking about in the video. The striped shirt guy had no connection to the Bentley. He wasn't the owner. He was just standing near it. Now, tons of people have viewed this video over the years. It's on YouTube, uh, practically frame by frame. People have looked at it. The LAPD had their own people go through with the video and do, um, you know, stabilization and enhancements, trying to see if there's anybody in it that could be identified. In the end, it really proved to not be that helpful. However, lots of people have speculated whether they can see the bow tie guy or the killer's vehicle in this video. But to my knowledge, I believe that the striped shirt guy is the only person captured in this video to ever be identified by a witness who was there as being one of the suspicious individuals in the garage that night. In addition to Kenny Story and Damian Butler, uh, Paul Offord, who was Bad Boy's head of security and there that night, also spotted the guy in the striped shirt. And Puffy's bodyguard, Eugene Deal, also saw the guy and told detectives later, a guy in a blue and white striped shirt came towards us and Paul was like, yo, watch out for that kid right there. I said I already got him in my eye. By the way, the Bentley in this shot was not the shooter's car. The shooter was actually in a, a Chevy Impala, uh, mid-90s. LAPD detectives looked into the Bentley since it bore a resemblance, at least, to the suspect vehicle description, but um, they identified that it was owned by a producer from Texas. He was completely cleared of any connection to the case, so he, he had nothing to do with it. Now, here's where it gets weird. Immediately following Biggie's shooting at the corner of Fairfax and Wilshire, just a couple hundred feet away from the parking garage, 911 calls from neighbors and other witnesses start pouring in. And one of them was from a, a girl and a guy who had been driving by as the shooting happened. And the girl saw something that she thought was pertinent for law enforcement to know. She believed she had seen the shooter. I've added some distortion to the voices in this 911 call. This is the boyfriend talking first. Yeah, what well, did they say? Hi, we have a, we have a, um, I got a, a description of the shooter, Wilshire. Wilshire, Yeah. What's your number? Hello? Okay, yeah, take him, sir. You have a description of the shooter? I have a, 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 what he's wearing. Okay, hold well, on, I'm gonna take him, okay? Alright. Hey, what's your name? Hey, what's Hey, where are you at now, sir? I'm driving. Are you driving? Did you get the Uh, well, my girlfriend saw the shooter. I saw somebody who most likely was the shooter, uh, for sure. But I'm giving you the description. Okay. Um, what's your name? Okay, I'm going to show you the description. Go ahead. Now he hands the phone to his girlfriend. Hello? Hi. He was wearing, like, a, he was, like, hiding behind some cars. Like, someone was shooting at him, and probably he was shooting back. Okay, what was he wearing, though? He was wearing, out, like, a red stripe. Hold up. A person driving by as the shooting happens is claiming that they think the shooter was actually on foot, hiding behind some parked cars on the street, and he's in a striped black or blue and white shirt, just like the guy spotted minutes earlier in the garage. But we also know that Biggie's murder was a drive-by shooting. We know he wasn't shot by someone standing on the street. So what's going on here? Michael, okay. That's it, uh-huh. Hey, that's right, you know? That's right, sure. Yeah, that's right, sure. And like dark, the uh, dark pants, and he was African-American. Hello, what's that up here? I don't know, right? Maybe. Okay, black you, black male? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and he was like hiding behind the car, someone was shooting, and he was hiding, and it's kind of like, kind of making the motion like we're shooting my nerves. I didn't see the gun, so I can't say that. Okay, I'll go ahead and let you know, okay? okay and here's the California Highway Patrol relaying the information from this call. 911 emergency operator 742. Hey, PDCHP here regarding your shots fired at the Wilshire and the Fairfax. Have a suspect description. Okay. Uh, suspect's a black male with build, uh, heavy build. Uh, okay, what kind of build? Heavy build. Okay. Uh, last thing, wearing a black striped shirt and dark pants, no further. 
any direction of travel, nothing. Yeah, we were passing heading behind a vehicle at the intersection when the shots were being fired. Right. And you got this from a... Uh, it's all 911, pass oh. by. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Now, there's no evidence that Biggie Shooter was on foot. All evidence points to it being a drive-by shooting. And I love that this witness is clear that the guy took a stance like he was shooting, but she couldn't confirm that he was holding a gun. I like witnesses who are as eager to tell you what they don't know as they are to say what they do know. I like witnesses who don't mix speculation with fact. So, is the guy in the street in the striped shirt and the guy in the garage in the striped shirt the same person? Seems like a pretty big coincidence. And if the guy in the striped shirt wasn't the shooter, then who was he? Why is he mentioned as a suspicious individual by two separate groups of witnesses, one before the shooting and one during? What was he doing in the garage, staring them down? What was he doing out in the street when the shooting happened? And why, if he's identified on the home video, does no one ever talk about this guy? We can only speculate. To date, no one has ever come forward with the striped shirt guy's identity. We do not know who he is. But one of the key witnesses in this case claimed that they thought Biggie's shooter probably had a spotter inside the party. Someone to call and tell the gunmen when the entourage was coming out, what vehicles they were in, etc. Could it be this guy? I don't know. This guy could have just as easily been a random person who was mad at Bad Boy and wanted to make them feel unwelcome, and the shooting that happened minutes later was totally unrelated. It could all just be a coincidence. But it's still one of the many random little loose ends in this case that have never been explained. Hey, if you like this episode, check out the rest of them by clicking the link here in this video.